Hi guys, my name is Tom and in this video I'm going to talk about the differences of editing uh, in DaVinci Resolve and uh, Adobe Premiere. Why I'm doing this video is because ever since I did my video about uh, me switching from uh, Premiere, I've been a long time Premiere, Adobe Premiere user and After Effects and all that stuff and I switched to uh, DaVinci Resolve last year. Uh, I'll, I've been getting a lot of questions or all just comments, people telling me that Oh, you know, you should give Premiere a chance. It's changed a lot and all that stuff. Uh, some people are just trying to tell me that, you know, Premiere has a lot more better features. And then some people are agreeing with me that they, they prefer um, uh, DaVinci Resolve. Now, if you watch my previous video where I talk about, you know, me switching, uh, which you can see that video uh, by following the link in the description of this video, then you'll, uh, you'll see that my reasons weren't so much about the features of the program, uh, it was more about the stability, it was one thing. Uh, there were some performance issues I had uh, with Premiere, uh, but really the main thing was actually the subscription model and, and some of those other things. Anyways, check out that video. But in this one, I'm gonna kind of just show you guys uh, how, you know, how both these programs perform on my uh, machine, which is, I guess now it's a couple of years old. It's kind of a, it's not a bad machine. It's not the latest top of the line. If you guys want to find out the exact specs, again, I'll post them in the description or go to my website even better, tomantosfilms.com. And over there, I'll post all the information about the computer that I'm using. But anyways, let's jump right in and see the editing differences between Adobe Premiere and DaVinci Resolve. By the way, guys, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. So if you guys want to step up maybe your uh, video editing skills, both in Premiere, Resolve, maybe even Final Cut Pro, uh, you guys can learn the basics and all the way up to some really cool advanced techniques all on Skillshare. So if you want to learn about filmmaking, good cinematography or, you know, even After Effects and things like that, uh, you can find all of that and a lot more on Skillshare. Uh, with the premium membership, you will get unlimited access so you can join all of their classes and communities uh, and kind of achieve the goals that are right for you. And also, most importantly, they're very affordable. If you get the annual subscription, it's actually less than $10 a month. So join more than 7 million creators learning with Skillshare already. Uh, if just follow the links in the description of my video to get first two months free. So the first test I'm gonna do in Premiere uh, is uh, just see how fast it is importing footage. So here I'm gonna just import these uh, nine clips and I've never imported this into Premiere. So uh, you're gonna see what happens. So I'm importing it. This is how long it takes. And as you can see, it's imported, but it still has to go and generate what's up here. It says generating peak files. So it has to do that for each file. So you can see, I mean, I can start playing it, but first of all, the waveform sometimes will not be visible, like if I put it into a timeline. See, so if a peak file has not been created for a certain a file, then you see there, uh, you cannot see the waveform. Now, as you can see, it appeared there. It's very small, but you can see it now. Uh, and also, it does slow down your computer when it's doing that. So I usually, when I have like a lot of files, I just import it all into Premiere, and then I kind of leave it and let it go, because as you can see, it's still going. And now it's finished. Okay, so I would say now it's done importing. Uh, next thing I want to see in Premiere is kind of how easy it is to import uh, files. So I have various files in, uh, in kind of a, this folder structure and I would like to just basically import it all, all of those folders and have it all duplicated here on Premiere. It just makes it easier, right? So again, I'm going to import and you see here I have basically this footage folder. Inside of that I have some files and then I have what's called BTS, behind the scenes folder. So I want, want to also import that. So um, here I'm just going to basically, I want to right click on this and uh, actually, you know, in Premiere, you go down here and you click Import Folder. We'll see what happens. So it's importing all of it. Okay, again, generating peak file. But then let's look at this. So it imported the files in the main folder, but it did not import, as you can see, the BTS folder that was in there. Meaning I have to, again, click, go in here, click separately, basically, for each folder and click Import Folder. Then it imports it, and then I can, for example, move it back into whatever you know folder structure I want. In DaVinci Resolve, what I like is when you're importing, for example, again, like a whole directory structure, uh, like I have here on my little uh, here project, I can just right click up here and go add folder and subfolders into Media Pool and create the bins. So basically, it's going to duplicate exactly what we have uh, here. Uh, now, when you import it, though, uh, one thing, and that's something maybe I don't like about Resolve, is that 
your project, you right away have to decide on your resolution and frame rate for your project. You can have multiple timelines, but they all have to have the same project frame rate and resolution, which is kind of a bummer, as I'll show you. So in this case, I'm going to go uh, don't change. And as you can see here, it imported all the clips. Very cool. Everything's in here and my directory structure is copied and everything. So that makes importing footage really easy. And also there is nothing happening here, like in the background that slows down the machine. I can right away start editing with this, uh, which again, I find in Premiere, it does that whole generating peak thing, whatever for the audio files. And it's, uh, yeah, it's just kind of weird. So in here, I can right away just start editing this footage. All right, so now in Premiere, I've imported various types of footage, um, and I'm gonna just kind of try editing each one of these and see how it goes. So first, we'll start with the most typical sort of like this H.264 that comes off of a lot of these mirrors ca cameras these days, like Sony A7S, uh, even you know certain um, Canon cameras, Panasonic. But this one happens to be from the Sony A6500. So uh, I'm gonna create a new timeline and. Here's the the footage, and I'm gonna just basically take a few of these clips here. It's showing me right away the meters, and you'll notice one thing I like about Premiere is that whenever you click basically any of the footage and you drag it onto this basically new uh, icon, basically new pro new uh, item icon, then it will create automatically for you a timeline that takes the name of that file and the exact same frame rate and everything. Playing it back in HD in full resolution, but 120 frames per second. Now, if I start editing this, so I'm just going to make some bumbo, mumbo jumbo kind of edits. This, this, whatever, just very random. Just overall, the general kind of editing workflow in Premiere, I like that. It's, it's pretty fast and it's intuitive. And this is how it looks now. So again, HD footage, H.264, so it is heavily compressed, but 120 frames per second, it plays back no problem here. So in Resolve, I'm going to again edit the same uh, clips from the Sony A6500. Drag and drop them. Now you'll notice it creates a timeline here for me also. But the timeline is, the settings are not based on the clips. So I can also, like you can see, I can just drag the, the clips and it creates a timeline. Uh, if you go here to the metadata, you can see uh, this is 24 frames per second at UHD resolution. And, you know, as you notice, our clips from the Sony 6500 are 119, whatever, 0.88, basically 120 frames per second and at 1080p. So it's, you know, it's able to play it uh, in this timeline. It's basically upscaling it and everything. Uh, we're watching this, by the way, in full resolution. But the, yeah, the, the, the problem is that in Premiere, you can uh, you can basically create automatically timelines that are exactly copy the, the settings of your native footage, whereas in uh, Resolve, you kind of have to go here, go to Project Settings, and you have to individually adjust it for uh, basically for each you know timeline that you create. Now, by the way, th these are global settings, so what I mean is, once you send change this, it changes it for all your timelines actually. So right now, I'm gonna set this to 1080. I'm going to set it here to 119.88, but you're going to notice something, and that's basically, I'll click save, and here you notice what's happening. It's creating this weird kind of skipping, and that's because basically our playback frame rate doesn't align. It's way faster than the uh, the actual uh, basically project you know, timeline. So if I go to uh, here again, project settings, you notice here, this thing pretty much has to be the same as your timeline frame rate. Well, it's, uh, when we created the project, that's when you kind of have to decide on your project frame rate because you cannot change that later. And that's one thing I wish you could do. First of all, you could change it later, but you could eat so that you could also have multiple timelines in Resolve with different resolutions and different frame rates, which unfortunately right now you can't have. So uh, timeline frame rate, you see it's like at 24, so I pretty much can't do anything other than change the resolution. But as you can see, playing back the, you know, these clips now in 1080, even though it's again, it's, uh, you know, technically 120 frames per second, but it's in a 24 frames per second timeline. I mean, it's it's playing, it's doing the frame re re reordering, no problems. Um, and yeah, the clip looks good. So I'm going to cut this up quickly, quickly here. And again, as you can see, it's playing back nice and smooth, the same as it did in, uh, in Premiere. 
Now this is again fairly simple footage. So next here we have the red uh, red files. So these are red files that are 4K red raw. And again, I'm gonna just drag it and create a timeline. It's in its native resolution. And as you can see here on the info panel, you can see 24 frames per second, uh, 4K or UHD resolution. And these are red raw files. Please don't judge my work by this. Again, this is just raw footage I imported and it's uh, it's basically not edited. I'm just random making random cuts. So you're gonna see some really probably weird things here <laughs> So playing it back is no issues at all um, Jumping back and forth on the timeline again is no issues So it all looks all looks good to me here now in resolve I'm gonna play back uh, and edit the, the red raw files and again I'm just gonna be trimming these shots here quickly. So maybe I'll skip this and just show you guys my <laughs> amazing finish edit so here's how it looks, playing back the red uh, raw 4K files. So now let's look at some GoPro footage. Uh, this is GoPro footage shot in 4K. Um, and again, I'm gonna just create a quickly a timeline with its native frame and resolution. And let's watch this quick edit. Again, this is uh, 4K, 24 frames per second GoPro footage. So it's pretty heavily compressed. Uh, and as you can see, it has uh, there's really no problems that I'm seeing in the, its decoding capability. Uh, and again, uh, noticing that just jumping between like the different clips uh, back and forth on the timeline, the, really there is no issues. Plays back nicely. It loads the footage right away. And in Resolve again, we're going to look at the same f uh, clips here. This is from the GoPro. And uh, as you can see, again playing back full resolution, uh, UHD or 4K at 24 frames per second, plays it back normally. One thing I do like about um, uh, the way that it, things are done in Resolve is that you get a lot more kind of, of real-time feedback. Like you see, I can leave this playing in play mode and I can r now jump around on the timeline and it will still keep on playing from this moment that I jumped to. Uh, another thing I like is, for example, when I take my cutting tool, uh, you can see as I'm going over the clips, it actually previews it for me. So I can see it here. Uh, you know, basically where I'm about to make that cut in that clip. So as I just basically scroll, I'm not pressing anything, I'm just scrolling with my cutting tool here over the clips, it shows me that. Another thing you notice is, you see these little like red lines here uh, in these clips, these are the clips right now that I edited. These red lines there, uh, first of all, when it's highlighted like this in red and then it shows you these red lines, that means this clip is being used in your project and these red spots is which parts of that clip are being used. So that's kind of a good little visual reference. Uh, especially helpful when you have a lot of clips maybe that are very similar and you're not sure would have you used this moment or not. Now, I'll tell you, Premiere also has a lot of cool little quirks and features and I, that's something that I'll find is that sometimes people get into arguing about oh I like this little feature in Premiere or and somebody else will say well I like this in Resolve. I'll tell you all of these programs the same thing with Final Cut uh, they all have their own cool little features uh, and then again sometimes some one person might love that feature another person might hate it and it really just comes down to preference uh, and um, yeah and there's really I, I wouldn't say that any of these fe specific features really are going to make or break this pro these programs. Now again, back in Premiere, I'm going to test out uh, one more type of video files, which these are Apple ProRes files. And this is how it looks when I'm playing it back now. So some fast editing. And as you can see it again, then skip a beat. All right, so now I'm going to go into color module and let's add some color grading effects uh, to the, these clips and see basically how it looks. Uh, I'm not going to play around with it too much. I'm just going to apply whatever like random uh, lookup table here. Just kind of adjust, you know, do some minor like exposure kind of adjustments and things like that. And I'm just going to copy this, the same basically settings to all the other uh, clips. So keep in mind, it might, it might look horrible. But anyways, this is just to see how it processes these color grading effects. And let's play it back. I was playing Apple ProRes footage nice and smooth. Yep, even with the scopes. Wow, Premiere has really surprised me. Because last time I used Premiere, it was, uh, let's just say, this wasn't a good experience. I could edit, but once I added the color grading and stuff, then it did not ver work ver very well. Now I'm going to do the same thing again, but to the red raw footage. As you can see, the color grading looks horrible, so ignore that. 
And the last set of clips we're gonna apply the effect to is uh, from the Sony A6500 4K footage. Wow, Premiere. I am finally pleasantly surprised. So, uh, yeah, the, definitely the latest version seems to have fixed a lot of these slowed up uh, issues and bugs I, I had before. And now in Resolve, we're gonna play back the same uh, Apple ProRes files. And as you can see, it's playing back nicely. Uh, there's really no problems. And, and this is something I've overall experienced in Resolve. I, I've never had really problems with it, kind of playing back the footage, as long as obviously it's all stored on, on good hard drives and locally, or if it's over a network, it's over a fast network. So now also let me apply a similar kind of quick color grading uh, to these clips, but here in Resolve, um, I got my lookup tables. I'm just gonna apply again something very random. And I'm just gonna apply it to all these other clips. Copying it is very easy, as you can see, like that. And as you can see, it plays it back without any issues whatsoever. Even with the, with all those you know color grading effects applied. Same as Premiere. Now this is something, I, again, that I've never really had problems in uh, Resolve with, uh, which is applying any kind of color grading and being able to preview it in real time. So again, I'm gonna apply the same color grade here to our red raw footage, uh, but now in Resolve. And as you can see, it plays it back without any issues. So again, the same the same thing as we saw in uh, in Premiere. Now, what if I wanted to uh, basically s uh, apply effects to some of these shots? So yeah, I mean, you can do some basic effects obviously in Premiere, but uh, really you can do some really cool stuff in After Effects. But you have to bring it to After Effects. Now you can go here. You can click on any of these clips and go replace with After Effects composition. And what that's going to do is basically it's going to load up After Effects for you. It's going to start up. So once you are in, in uh, After Effects, it's going to basically bring in the footage for you right away. So trim it. So that is really nice. Uh, it even brings any kind of effects that you apply to it. So in this case, we have the Lumetri effect, so we can turn it off. Um, and then, yeah, and then here you can do the effects. Now, whatever you do here, if, for example, let's say I... Um, whatever, apply another effect, something very random, let's say this CC toner. Um, once I apply this, if I save this, basically After Effects project, and I close it, it should automatically update in Premiere. So whatever basically you do in After Effects, it automatically updates here in uh, Premiere. And as you can see, oh, now, now it starts kind of slowing down. See? When it has the color grading and the effects done in Premiere, it's no problem. But because these other effects here are applied in After Effects, which is a separate application, it basically, I guess, it sometimes has problems playing it back. So just keep that in mind. Now, obviously, if you do some really complicated effects, that's you know the same in every program. You're pretty much not going to be able to ever play it back in real time. Now, in Resolve, if you wanted to do uh, effects, apply them, uh, it's even easier, like I said, because it's right here built into the program. You just jump into Fusion, just kind of like After Effects. Uh, again, it's node-based, uh, the same thing as the color module in, in Resolve, which I find is more powerful. So you can do all your advanced compositing, you know, uh, green screen, all that stuff. You can do it here, and it's right in the same application. So you just literally jump back to edit. You, you can change the edit if you want to, jump back to Fusion, do your effects. So that's kind of cool. One thing actually that I really do like also um, in Resolve is that not only is it the same, like I said, for the color grading, you have a dedicated color grading kind of an application within Resolve, but you do, you have Fairlight, which is uh, kind of like this dedicated uh, audio editing. Now, can you do audio editing in Premiere? Of course you can, you can do it right there, but for some of these really more advanced kind of audio effects, or if you want to load in sort of, uh, for example, VST plugins or things like that, for that, you're going to have to use Adobe Edition. Again, another great program, and it's, again, dynamically linked, so you can go between the two. But I still find it's just faster, more intuitive to do it here. Uh, and here I can kind of preview my, you know, my clips. I can see, for example, how I want the the, the audio to be, for example. You know, here I can, I can look at the clips here. I can look at the... I have a scroller here with the frame rates. As, and as I'm scrolling, everything's kind of based here, so I can see it in real time, see the waveform, see what's happening. Um, it's just, I don't know, I find that, that having these really advanced kind of audio effects tools built right into your editing application, it just makes it that much faster and, and easier for you to really kind of polish off and do good uh, sound mix. 
uh, in the end. So uh, again, one of those features that I like, some people maybe won't care about it as much. I think that's one of the, the winning feature features of uh, uh, the DaVinci Resolve. So as you guys could see, uh, I was actually pleasantly surprised, to be honest. I, I did not know uh, really how Premiere is going to uh, you know, perform. Like I said, the last time I used it was in 2018, and I've had some issues with Premiere. Uh, most notably, actually, was just not even the performance issues. Sometimes it would slow down here and there, especially when dealing with like Apple ProRes footage. Uh, but the biggest issues I had back in the day was uh, crashing, which it did not crash right now. Now, I only did this for like the last two hours, basically, I've been using the machine. So it did not crash. Now, as far as the performance itself, as you can see, both of them can perform well, given that, again, you have a decent uh, or reasonable video editing machine. Anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know in the comment section below. Uh, let me know what else you want me to talk about. And also let me know about your experience of using different programs. Maybe also those of you who have experience uh, editing in Final Cut Pro, which I myself am not much of a Final Cut Pro user. Anyways, uh, once again, for more info, check out my website. There you can subscribe to my newsletter, tomantosfilms.com. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.